Thanks to ESL and PaySafe card, I will be in attendance of ESL Pro League Finals in Odense, Denmark in December 2017. It'll be a big CSGO tournament that with SK Gaming already being qualified. The current standings in the online league make it look promising that we see the best teams in the world attending. PaySafe card is doing a little contest that is free to sign up. You can win an all expenses paid trip to the finals to attend them with me. They will pay your hotel, ticket, food expenses, and all of that stuff. Check the link in the description for details on how to participate. See you in Denmark for the ESL Pro League finals. I'm looking forward to say hi to a lot of you. What's good everybody? My name is Kevin and I played Counter-Strike Global Offensive for a very long time. Combine that with Counter-Strike Source and Counter-Strike 1.6 and I spent fairly over 10,000 hours in Counter-Strike until now. I've got a lot to share and uh, honestly I don't know why I just didn't do it up until today. Welcome to a pilot episode, welcome to Global Elite Analyzed where I talk you through one of my games of CSGO with the goal of you learning a thing or maybe even two. The game on our hands isn't a Valve official matchmaking game, it is an ESA on DE Cobblestone. However, I'm fairly certain that the opponents having the ESA ranks A minus A, A plus, A plus, and A plus are definitely Global Elite involves official matchmaking system. We started as CT facing the bad guys. Cobble, I'm a big fan of playing the A bomb site solo. First clip is the piss round. Despite the general fear of aim punch, I always tend to go with Nate. To this date, I lost most of my piss rounds due to that missing smoke flash or grenade rather than the aim punch. So I favor a nade set in the pistol. The pattern you will notice is as following. I go middle, down the ramp fast, smoke in between the doors and give the short peek above to gain information. This is the pattern that I usually do. The switch ups you will see in the upcoming clips. A very effective method, early contact, early info, early control. Gain information, maybe get a quick entry frag, but don't hold yourself up too long. If you die early, the A site is wide open and it will ruin your round most likely. I get information, I go back immediately and get a call out that they are already in connector via drop. As I know the enemies in middle can't be with me yet due to the timing and possibly them still wondering if I'm close as the smoke is still there lying in middle, I decide to ignore middle completely, take on connector directly. Two quick kills, however, I die because I was too frag hungry, so I call it greedy. Dying like that will give the terrorists a window to come back into the round. The most important thing you should take away from this is that staying alive on A is worth more than getting another kill. In an eco round, I'm a big fan of the Zeus rather than the pistol. More often than not, the one-shot kill opens up a tiny window in a full eco that sometimes even gets converted. Regardless if it gets converted or not to round win, it damages the enemy's economy with like little effort. A worthwhile investment in any round, in my eyes. In a follow-up round, my Zeus entry actually nearly resulted in a round win. Welcome to the clutch, a 1 versus 2 situation, the door to B site is smoked. However, considering the angle my teammate had before he died, as well as the timing from my enemies, I decided to not go drop and limit myself to that one angle fighting towards plateau, but go out directly through the smoke behind rock. Now there's the scenario that both could be on the bomb site. What I don't want is that the enemies are setting up in a 180 degree setup after the bomb plant. A uh, 180 degree setup is what I call when two enemies are lined up to trade or fight the way that the single player has to spin the maximum amount of degrees. It means one guy is on the one side, the other guy is directly on the other side. The most unlikely situation for a player in a 1 versus 2 to win that situation. So if you're a terrorist, keep that in mind. A 180 degree setup in a 1 versus 2 will most likely result in a win for you. So I peek the right side first, seeing if a terrorist pushes over. He does, and I get the frag on him. Now it is a 1 versus 1. The second player is either on the bomb side or stairs still, meaning he can peek any angle, and at the same time he knows where I am because I just fragged his teammate. As I just got a frag to the right of the bomb side, it is very unlikely that the second player is on the same spot. The left side of the bomb side is smoked, so I peek to the left to speedway as he limited himself to either the left side pushing or peeking the same angle again. No noise is being made, nor does he peek on the left, so I have to also worry about the bomb side angles to the right again. Notice that I do not wide peek, means I'm likely to get cover if he catches me a tiny bit off guard. I peek to the right, I see him, but I do not engage instantly in the fight. I'm taking a second or two in between the short peaks, in between the fight to play a little of a guessing game with him. Now the roles are reversed. I know where he is, he knows where I am, but he's in an open area, I am not. So I still have the rock to play around on, so I decide to peek him eventually before he can reset his positioning again, end up winning the aim duel and welcome to the clutch. <laughs>
In the next clips, you will see the ways I peak middle with the AWP. Starting off with a top spawn towards long A, if you move nearly flawlessly, you will have a direct peak to anyone that jumps down the ramp as a terrorist trying to enter the door, avoiding any early flush from them. Normally a clean and quick entry frag. The one thing you have to worry about is a terrorist standing on top with the AWP aiming towards the middle connector area. So I advise you to do this peak only, and really only, if you know that the enemy's economy isn't allowing them to buy an AWP. In this scenario, nobody is there, so notice how I slowly search for information on the most common spots for an enemy to hold A middle on his own. From the little car, to the statue, to the rock, and then to A long. The second peek I do is throwing a smoke in between the doors again. If you do not throw it in between the doors, you will not be able to have that vision. I peek above it towards A long. 9 out of 10 times it is a free kill, as anybody running over there doesn't really consider an enemy's op to peek this angle, which is what also happened here. After the shot, I instantly retreat, as enemies could be in middle close, which also turns out to be the case. I get a follow-up kill. However, the really smart thing in the situation to do would have been to retreat all the way either to truck or to the bomb site to get cover from A long. So again, don't be too greedy. The trade kill happened on me from A-Long. It could have won the terrorist the round, luckily it did not. Another round I do the same. Smoke middle and peek towards A-Long. As it is already later in the game and the enemies are prepared for me gaining early information, I search the common spots even slower than before, from the left to the right this time, and I get kind of lucky that once I double zoomed in, an op actually appears on rock. This time I take the kill, instantly retreat to not get traded out properly. When you go back to the A bomb site and you have that information that nobody went quickly A long, and middle seems kind of clear as well, I like to go back to truck, jump on the edge of it, and then keep jumping there. It allows you to get information on anyone peeking middle or A long, both ways in vision, and once you get contact, don't peek it again, but go back to the bomb site for a flash wing or two and call for help from your B site rotations. I want to stress that you always have to make sure that the B rotation has got the information properly, so he knows whether to rotate through door, mini hut, or top window. There's nothing more frustrating for a B player than getting picked off while rotating just because you didn't call the enemy's positions or where they could already be by the time that the B guy rotate. The amount of times that people get killed because they jump out of window but the guy on the A bomb site is hiding somewhere and doesn't have the info that one could be already up ramp or one could be maybe pushing up to truck or his close connector or something like that is ridiculous. So make sure the information and the communication is on point for the rotation. If you have contested middle a lot, you may also do something risky when you're in a low buy regardless. As I always kept smoking middle doors, I decide to push through it on a round where we barely have any money, but the enemy hasn't as well. I myself am max 7, so I need to play closer anyway. The enemies know the smoke by now, but I never pushed it, so they will probably not expect it. It works out, but I wouldn't really keep pushing it too much and try it over and over again. More often than not, you really burn yourself from a guy in Dragon Lore holding window down middle. What you can take away from this is that if you time a risky play in middle pushing for the smoke properly, they may pay off big time. However, I wouldn't do that just because your usual hold doesn't work. Just do it when you feel it's the right time. As a terrorist in matchmaking or pugs, it mostly comes down to individual skill, I feel like. I rarely see proper smoke executes or anything similar. Really, it is understandable when it's a randomly thrown together mix of players. To end this, here's a few things that work out for me a lot. Pushing middle directly through doors. First aim danger, the middle connector area. Throw a flash in between to blind anybody peeking close middle. Then work up ramp. I always tend to ignore long A players as that way it gives the CTs too much time to rotate. If you go through middle to A long, the rotations are usually already in window and they have a proper angle on you on A long. And I often just get boxed in heavily from A long, whereas in T ramp, I'm able to fully play the CTs. Molotov the little chicken hunt area, smoke of connector, and work from there. You usually find yourself in a great spot, find a guy back at the bomb site slash truck, a rotator at window, and or a guy close at A long. When the CTs are on an eco round, I tend to avoid dropping down furiously. Rushing in is a bad idea in my eyes and drop when you're fully equipped against an eco. So I tend to slowly check drop, work my way down once the B plateau players are rushing in to get contact. As they get contact on B long area, the drop people have to start worrying as well right now. If a guy is holding drop from connector, he's not going to be interesting for you if you want to hit the B site. So you just ignore him and go left side directly. However, in a full buy, I love to go heavy drop, especially in the fourth round in the first buy round. Molot off the right side from your point of view and instantly go down to the left side towards the site. In this clip, it works perfectly as intended, as in many cases, the communication of the enemy team on the CT side on B isn't fast enough, so you open up the B site and get it ready quick for a round win. 
and in the end, a nice clip finishing the game. I wanted to get information in the drop area that we could play off of. However, my teammates decided to go B long rather quickly. As I noticed the CT picking them off with the Mac 7, I decided to instantly go there and help them. If I wait for supporting them, the enemies will be able to reposition too quickly for me, and then I'm lost as my information is gone, my teammates are gone, and it'll be a hard clutch. Taking quick action like this gives away your position, However, as I am in a disadvantage already, I feel like it is the move that might win me the round over having to search for all the enemies with no base at all. I know from the shooting and sounds that one guy is close to the plateau, one guy is in drop still. Considering the time and that it was a 4 versus 4 just shortly before that, there has to be one player that is very late to the party as he's probably still took care of the A-bomb site or in connector. Taking it all into account, I rather quickly jump out to make this 2 versus 3 work as a 2 versus 2. The rest is a combination of skill, timing, and luck. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this rather lengthy video with insight on my cobblestone play. Let me know what you think, as videos where I try to explain and talk about things aren't really my usual meal course. I'd love to know whether the food I served was acceptable and what I can improve here. Maybe tone down the videos to certain situations and talk about these situations more in detail. Maybe do more overviewed videos of some solo plays or talk about positioning more. Aggressive plays? Cisco is a field with a variety of aspects to cover, detailed or not, so yeah. Would love to hear your opinion, and if you made it this far, please leave me a thumbs up. Liking the video helps a lot. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Have a nice day still. Uh, definitely Global Elite involves official matchmaking. Matchmaking. Yeah!